today I wanted to brainstorm some handmade gift ideas that I think would be great to give this holiday season. I tried to keep all of these ideas handmade or at least customizable and nothing that's too intricate where you'd feel burnt out from making all of your Christmas gifts this year, but definitely something that will stand out. And some of these might feel really small, but you could kind of combine them and make a really nice gift. But I want to share more inspiration pictures just to give more of an idea on like style and color and maybe get a little bit more specific so let's get right into it i'm going to kind of split these up into categories so the first category will be holiday decor this first gift idea i feel like would be really good to give to someone who's maybe hosting christmas and that is a dried orange garland i made little sliced orange ornaments last year but this year i want to make like a full garland it was so easy i think i just did them in the air fryer but you can also do them in the oven and it's honestly a win-win situation because it makes your house smell so good you could just dry slices and add them on like a twine string or you could get really intricate and add like greenery and cinnamon sticks or berries and lights really as much as you want to go into it and then you can make like a few at a time if you want to give them to multiple people i've even seen it where people cut little shapes like stars and stuff this is a great gift for people who have more of like an earthy Christmas vibe and I was curious because I didn't know what the tradition was behind the oranges so I looked it up and it says orange slices symbolize the sun which becomes more present after the solstice when the days grow longer and stimulate love prosperity and a sweet and happy life and you could write that on the little card and I feel like it's really meaningful if you want to give a cute little DIY I think this is very doable next up is a stocking this is a classic Christmas gift especially if you know someone who has just moved into a new home like for me I don't have a Christmas stocking yet I just realized in my new apartment so I'm definitely gonna have to make one for myself and it works up very quickly with pretty chunky yarn and needles and this is a one skein project depending on how large you make it so you can use a little bit pricier yarn if you want it to be super high quality i recommend the malabrigo yarn it's some of my favorite yarn to work with and they're totally customizable especially based on your skill level you can add some color work using like intarsia knitting or duplicate stitching um, you can add people's initials also i see them all the time with little pom-poms and charms just go have fun with it and if you know the person really well you probably know what they're into and you can kind of match the stocking to the person and i'm sure you can find like a ton of free patterns for stockings online i'll link a few down below and for the knit stocking you might need to learn like a few different new techniques if you're doing it more like a sock knit but it can get you a little excited to start knitting socks maybe as you guys know i'm kind of obsessed with sock knitting right now i have one right here i would suggest socks for a christmas gift but i'm not going to do that because they take super long unless you really want to and if you know how to sew even easier and less time is just sewing up a stocking i've seen people use like vintage quilts and stuff to make the cutest stockings if you can find like a really unique quilt at the thrift store or even just quilt it yourself because it's so small i think that's a really good gift i also saw some from free people last year where it had a bunch of tassels and trim and lace on it so i think i want to make a stocking kind of like that and i feel like since i don't have one that's why i'm like so excited about stockings obviously if you like know that the person already has stockings like maybe don't give a stocking but i also think you can put them anywhere in the house it doesn't always have to be over like a fireplace knit ornaments are the cutest thing ever you can add them on gifts and they're a great way to get rid of some scrap yarn that's been laying around because they don't take up that much yarn and i kind of love yearly christmas gifts if you make ornaments for everyone every single year then people can start like collecting your little ornaments on their tree here are just a few examples of ones that i found that are so adorable little mittens tiny little mittens you can also make a garland out of these i already started making a little mitten i haven't done the thumb yet how cute little stocking ornaments and if you already have made like a large stocking i feel like you could translate that into like a smaller one but there are free patterns i'll try to link as many free patterns for this kind of stuff as i can below or paid patterns too because i don't think they would be that expensive or anything since they're just like little ornaments okay these ones i've been particularly obsessed with it's these little tiny houses i think this would even be cute as like a keychain and then along with the ornament i also saw like these little plushies so i guess this isn't an ornament but you can knit up a little house and stuff it and have it be a little decoration i feel like i want to do this with my parents because their house has like green details like the door is green and like the shutters are green so i feel like i could definitely make a house that looks like their house and i think that's just a really sweet gift i think i'm going to teach a knit ornament class so i'm going to have to make my own pattern for that which i'm super excited about obviously crocheted too first is this gingerbread one you only need two colors um and you can decorate it however you 
want. And I'm sure I'll find a bunch of different ornaments. So I'll just put in a bunch of pictures here for things that I've been loving. This next one I'm only including because I saw a picture and I thought it was really cute. This one is more if you want to be really nice, maybe for your parents or your grandparents, but it's this crocheted tree skirt. Eventually I'm going to make something like this for myself so I can just like keep using it every single year. This does look like it would take forever. That's why I said probably only for someone really special. I just wanted to include it because I thought it looked really cute. You can also probably make some pretty cool ones just by sewing some stuff together. But this granny square one in particular, you can customize the colors of it and I think it would be really cute. Next category is clothing and accessories. I'm trying to stay away from things that require like too much sizing because I feel like that can get kind of complicated and you don't want to spend a ton of time on something that won't fit or if you need like exact measurements for. I think this is the only one that would require you knowing someone's size, but it's an embroidered top and this is such a quick and easy thrift flip if you already know how to embroider, but I think if you knew like a few basic stitches that it wouldn't be too hard to kind of add some cute details. This is the specific style that I think is so cool and this might be more of a gift for someone that's more into fashion but this is a super easy and quick thrift flip. You can add something really meaningful to just a plain shirt and you can really add it to anything like tote bags, hats, obviously. I am loving this account called Eva Joan Repairs. They do such cool embroidery and like mending and make cool patches and stuff so if you need any inspiration for embroidery and go to this page because I just love their style of embroidery and I really want to get better at it. Maybe you could embroider like their birth year or something with their star sign, um, a nickname, maybe their favorite animal or anything and it doesn't have to be perfect but it would be more meaningful than just getting a plain shirt that they can get themselves and I'm not super good at embroidery but I want to get better. Speaking of learning embroidery, I want to say thank you to the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes and members who come together to explore their creative interests and to take that next step in their creative journey. If you cannot tell by my channel, I am very interested in engaging in new crafts, but sometimes I don't know where to find the right guidance to start. So Skillshare has been the perfect platform for me to explore and to find new things to scratch that creative itch. Skillshare is a place to get inspired, learn new skills, and put them to work in meaningful ways. It is the largest online learning community for creatives with a wide range of topics and courses to choose from. And one of my favorite favorite features, especially for the craft specific courses, is that each member can actually upload a picture of their project so you can browse what other people have been making, which is really good to get inspired for your own projects. And like I was saying before, I really want to add embroidery to my list of skills and I found that Skillshare has been such a great platform to help me do that. One embroidery course that I enjoyed in particular was actually a machine embroidery class. It was called How to Draw with a Sewing Machine Free Motion 101 by Jordan Gomez. I've already tried out hand embroidery projects before before, but I never thought that I could use my sewing machine to create a freeform pattern. And I found that this class was helpful in breaking down the techniques to free motion embroidery. And she also gave a list of materials that would be helpful. And like I was saying, I was able to browse other people's projects to get some ideas that I want to embroider on my shirts and everything. I've also been wanting to learn more about watercolor, spinning yarn, lino prints, natural dyeing, the list goes on and on, and guess what? Skillshare has one or more courses for every single one of these skills, so I am so excited to really dive into those courses as well. And Skillshare has classes on a wide variety of topics, including graphic design, photography, fine art, marketing, productivity, freelance and entrepreneurship, crafts, and more. Whether you want to learn the basics of watercolor or learn how to start your own creative business, Skillshare has the courses to take you from beginner to pro alongside a very supportive online community. And do not wait because the first 500 people to click the link in my description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So make sure you click that link so you can explore everything that Skillshare has to offer. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring. Now let's get back into the video. Just warning you, these next couple are going to be Duh, I already thought of that one. But I'll share a ton of photos so you can get an idea more of the styles that I'm talking about. Next is a knit headband. And I'm saying knit headband in particular because they're very beginner friendly. You don't have to do any increases or decreases unless you want to, I guess. But you can try out different stitches. But also you can add text using intarsia knitting or duplicate stitching. For example, my mini grew headbands were one of my best sellers last year. I haven't made any this year actually i should probably make a few because i really like making those but if you want to give a try with intarsia knitting then i would definitely 
try it on a headband and use a little grid and follow that because it's just like a rectangle so but if you're a super beginner grab some chunky yarn and some chunky needles and it's really pretty simple to knit up a quick headband and then going along with that is also a scarf which is pretty basic too but i really have been wanting to try out new stitch patterns i just tried out the brioche stitch which kind of looks ribbed but if you do it with two colors you'll be able to see it on each side i've seen people do it with like mohair for one of them and then also just like a regular spun wool and i think that was really cool and it adds like a lot of cool texture so i'm definitely going to try that out this year i apologize for the lighting changing so much i forgot it gets dark at 4 p.m now so we're just going to do the warm lighting you could try out double knitting which mirrors the image on the other side i've tried it a few times but i haven't made like an actual piece so i feel like a scarf would be good practice for that and if the person you're giving the scarf to lives in a cold climate like who would not want a really nice wool scarf next is these chunky mittens and mittens maybe seem a little intimidating but i will be putting out a mitten tutorial very soon specifically these chunky mittens i made these for a gift for my mom last year and then i also just did a mitten commission so i feel like they work up pretty quickly when you use like super chunky yarn but you can also go in a more like intricate direction and do a lot of cool color work i just saw these mittens on the knitting subreddit and i think these are really cool so definitely gift someone some mittens and they'll probably love you this is another one skein project and i think they only take a few hours to make so definitely keep an eye out for that tutorial um it'll be out in december this is a super quick one but knit scrunchies i think you can really play around with some cool textures and colors and this would be a nice little stocking stuffer next is a crochet or knit collar this one you have to know the person's style because i feel like a lot of people wouldn't wear this but the people that would would really appreciate it they can be very unique and you can do it super colorful or even neutral i really like how they added the bow on this one but like i said the collar is a little bit more out there like not everyone would wear one just because other than fashion they don't really have any function to them just be aware of like who you're making it for i have a few friends that i think would think it's really cool but other people I don't think would wear it but if you know someone that would wear a collar i think that they would really appreciate it next category is home decor i think candle holders with like a pair of tapered candles is a really good gift especially like if you don't know the person super well it's just like a small little gift and i've just kind of been obsessed with um tapered candles recently i think they really elevate a space i will say they're a little bit terrifying because i always feel like they're gonna tip over and set my apartment on fire but knock on wood hopefully that doesn't happen but i've just seen so many unique candle holders recently and i think people are using air dry clay or even oven dry clay i used to make little charms like cupcake charms with polymer clay when i was a kid it would be kind of fun to just sit down maybe with some friends and make little candle holders for people or even each other and like paint them in different colors and then you can get really intricate with these wall hangings if you're pretty comfortable with clay and paint but if you're just starting out just a little candle holder that has like maybe the person's favorite color or a little design on it i think is just a really cute small stocking stuffer type gift and now that you have so much clay from making candle holders you can also make cute little charms like i said i made little charms when i was a kid obviously i'd make something a little bit more sophisticated the ones here look more like they're porcelain but you could definitely make a version with air dry clay and then also like little buttons and magnets you, you can just hot glue little magnets or pins on the back so if you know someone that has like a bunch of pins on their bag then you can make them a little custom pin and i think they would appreciate that yeah like little clay magnets and pins and charms i think are really cool especially if you're a good painter next is a crochet or knit pot holder not like a pot holder you would take something out of the oven but like a pot cover for your plants this one i thought was really cute it has like a tartan design or plaid i guess this one's really cute but you could also do something super basic if you're a beginner just knit like a little sleeve you could also do the same thing around a cool thrifted vase but yeah you could do a ton of different things this is one that i made earlier this year i actually have a tutorial for this one in my I think it's my last minute gift guide video i think i posted for galentine's day so if you want to learn how to make this it's very easy just go to that video or i can link it down below just a quick recommendation though i would use cotton yarn for this maybe give them the pot and the plant too but i would say make sure it's cotton so they can just like throw it in the wash if it gets dirty next a crochet pillow if you know the granny stitch go ahead and do this one it's very simple and you can buy like a little pillow insert to go with it you can either do two big granny squares and sew them together or make like a bunch of different ones and then sew them all together i really like these two color ones it's not like 
doing too much. If you kind of know the color scheme in their house, I think this would be a good gift because you can never have too many pillows. But going along with that, I think these like patchwork pillows are really cool if you know how to sew. You can even hand sew these pretty easily and use like a bunch of different types of fabrics and just sew them all together and make like a little patchwork pillow. I like the contrasting colors they use. Next is a thrifted teacup candle. You can find a bunch of different teacups at the thrift store for pretty cheap. You can get candle wax and then also the wicks with the metal at the bottom from the craft store and just spend the afternoon making some little candles in cute little thrifted teacups or even if you have those tea tins laying around. I have a ton of the Harney and Sons tea tins because I use them to store like a lot of my sewing stuff. You can even pour a candle in that and I think if you could find some fragrance oil you can match the scent to like the what the tea was. I just think the teacups are really cute decor and then if you make it a candle even better. I think that's a great gift and a good way to repurpose something. So the next category is kitchen stuff. This one I've never seen before actually. I was just kind of browsing Pinterest the other day and I found this but it's a crochet teapot holder. If you have a friend that drinks tea you can thrift them a teapot and make a crochet cover. These can get pretty intricate. This one I saw I thought was so cool with the little cherry. I think I would cry if I got this as a gift. Next Next is placemats. If you know someone that loves to host like dinner parties or holidays, you could make them a set of placemats. This checkered one, it has a little silverware pouch to put the silverware in. This round one, I think is a free pattern on Hobie. If you want to check it out, I'll link it. If I had a kitchen table, I would make these for myself, but I do eat at the coffee table every single night because I don't have a kitchen table, even though I've been living in my apartment for a year. But if you know someone that likes to sit down for dinner or host dinners and stuff, I think a set of crocheted placemats is a really good gift. This is something that you could gift every single year. So if you started it this year, then it would be continuous. And that is vanilla extract. Super random, but it's only two ingredients. If you buy vanilla bean stalks and then just alcohol, I think it's vodka. But it's basically just alcohol and vanilla beans. It's supposed to be way better than the store-bought vanilla. But you're supposed to let it sit for at least six months to a year. But if you started this year and gifted vanilla extract, then by the time next Christmas rolls around, you can give them another one and then they know it's time to use the last one. And then just like every year. That one's kind of random, but I feel like it's kind of a cool reoccurring gift. Another random food item, pickles. I went to a wedding where they gifted all the guests pickles. I feel like it could be a good Christmas gift too. And that could be your thing. Everyone has like someone in their family or friends that makes like a food item every year and you get like super excited for it. Like my Uncle Mike makes summer sausage. I don't eat red meat anymore, but I remember always being excited for Uncle Mike's summer sausage. Also, my brother's girlfriend's mom makes this really good like caramel puff corn. And I just always get excited to eat it every year because I know that there'll be some for Christmas. And your thing could be pickles if you want. They're really simple. You can spend just like an afternoon making the brine and pickling stuff. I don't know if they sell decorative pickling jars, but you could definitely buy cool jars that they can reuse if you can find them. Next category is stationery. And this isn't a handmade gift, but it is something that I'll be gifting people this year. So this website called Papier or Papier, I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. I think it's a French word. They do custom planners and I'll show you what I've bought from them. So I bought my 2023 planner from them. Planners are a really good gift because obviously the year is ending and they're going to need a new planner if they use planners. Even just a gift card if they're picky about it. With Papier, you can actually customize the text on your notebook and they ship like decently fast for having something be customized. This is another notebook that I got. I write down project notes when I knit and crochet things. So I put mini group project notes on this one. They also sell recipe journals. So if you know someone that cooks, you can customize a little recipe journal for them so they can write their recipes down. I think that's what I'm going to get my mom. I hope she's not watching this. Shout out to Papier. I love their stuff and I'm going to continue to order from them. I think I'm going to order my mom a recipe journal and then my boyfriend's mom a planner from there and have her name on the front. So that's kind of what I've been brainstorming for handmade gifts this year. I know like the concept of all of these might seem a little bit basic, but I'm hoping that the inspiration pictures can kind of get some creativity flowing, maybe some ideas for specific colors and textures and even 
patterns that I've linked down below. So hopefully this was helpful or inspired you in any way. I'm thinking of doing a little vlogmas this year, so please let me know if you want me to do that. Maybe I can show me making these little Christmas gifts. So let me know if you want vlogmas. Other than that, let me know in the comments down below if you have any other ideas for some cute handmade gifts. I'm sure you guys have more ideas. You guys always have good ideas in the comments. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a like and make sure you subscribe, especially for more tutorials and holiday content coming in December you don't want to miss that and i want to say thank you guys so much for being here and thank you for all the love recently we just hit 15k so thank you i appreciate it i'm so glad that you're here and we can hang out and talk about making clothes and diys and thrifting and fashion and i just love having you guys here so i just want to say thank you guys so much and i love you i hope you have a great day and i'll see you in the next video bye